Hi, I'm Dr Pippa Watson. I'll be taking you through a hand examination with the deal here. It may be more comfortable for the patient to have their hands positioned on a pillow. Just going to start by inspecting the elbows. Could I ask you just to show me your elbows, please? Thank you. So I'm looking for any psoriatic plaques, uh, rheumatoid nodules or an olecranon bursa. And if you just put your hands back down, thank you. Start with inspection. Look for obvious swellings, loss of alignment, muscle wasting and scars. If there are changes, try to decide if they are symmetrical or asymmetrical. I'm also looking at the skin and I'm looking at the nails for changes such as pitting or ridging, which occur in psoriasis or any signs of nail fold vasculitis. Could I ask you just to turn your hands over for me? Thank you. Look at the palms of the hands and at the finger pulp for signs of parma erythema and scars such as from a carpal tunnel release. Feel. Feel for peripheral pulses, muscle bulk and tendon thickening. Assess median and ulnar nerve sensation by touching over the thenar and hyperthenar eminences. Radial nerve sensation is most reliably tested over the thumb and index finger web space. Temperature is assessed by comparing the forearm to the wrist and metacarpophalangeal joints using the back of your hand. Squeeze across the metacarpophalangeal joints while watching the patient's face for any signs of discomfort. By manually palpate any metacarpophalangeal joints which appear tender or swollen. This should be done by having your thumbs above and index fingers below the joint. And then I'm going to use a similar two-handed technique to examine the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. So wrist should also be examined using two hands and checking for pain. Thank you. So it's good to test movements both actively and passively. So we're going to start with the wrist. So can I ask you to do this for me, please? Thank you, that's great. And then the reverse. And then I'm just going to move that myself, thank you. So just nice and relaxed. That's great. Thank you. And then I'm going to test some um, finger movements. So if I could ask you uh, just to extend your fingers like that for me. So bring them in and then bring them out again. Spread your fingers as far apart as you can. That's great. Keep them there. Don't let me push them down. So that's me just testing radial and ulnar nerves. And then if I could ask you to turn your hands over, point your thumbs up to the ceiling. Keep it there. Don't let me push it down. And that's testing the median nerve. Next, I'm just going to ask you to bury your fingers for me if you can. Thank you. So that's a good test of hand function. And again, testing the movements of all of the fingers. I'm going to test a couple of functional movements now. Um, if I could ask you just to grip my fingers for me and squeeze them as tightly as you can. Thank you very much. So that's power grip. Uh, and I'm also going to test pincer grip, which is really important um, for doing things like uh, using a key. So if I can ask you just to uh, make a circle like that, that's great. And then don't let me pull it apart. So you've got a nice strong pincer grip there. Other functional tests may be made, such as picking up a small object, doing up a button, or holding a cup or a pen. Phelan's test. So if you suspect carpal tunnel syndrome, it's useful to do Phelan's test. So if I could ask you just to bring your hands up like this, and you just ask the patient to hold their arms there for 60 seconds. Thank you. Or you can do a modified version where you're squeezing the wrist and forcing it into flexion and you would hold that for 30 seconds. In a positive test, the patient will experience symptoms such as tingling or numbness. Thank you.